Good evening. Thanks, Mike. Everybody looks very solemn and somber out there tonight. Uh, this is not my first meeting that I've attended. I've actually been sitting in the cheap seats and watching this process as it's gone. And it's been, uh, I've been around a few community engagement programs, and this one has been going incredibly well, at least in my view. And it's my job tonight to quickly summarize some, the survey that was recently done. The survey was actually in the field this month, so it's in a sense hot off the press. And, and uh, 300 interviews were done from the uh, voter registration list from the, uh, from the school district. And again, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail about the results, but I want to cover at least I think the key points in terms of the decision set that you're facing uh, this evening in terms of uh, developing some recommendations to the Board of Education. One of the first questions on the survey would just simply ask you, it was kind of a warm-up question, but an important question nevertheless, asking about the directions of things here in the Jacksonville community, whether things are kind of moving in the wrong direction or in the right direction. And you can see on the slide that 53% said that things were moving in the right direction. The reason that's important, I've been around school issues like this for, I hate to admit this now, 30 years. And in a general sense, the more optimistic a community is about the direction of things, the more likely they are to support key initiatives that may be placed on the ballot. We have just gone through the worst recession in all of our lifetimes, and people were feeling very negative about things, and there is now some recovery for that. And the recovery from the recession means that it may be getting to be a good time or at least an opportunity for a good time uh, to place something on the ballot. We also asked people if they had heard anything about the Vision 117 program. And this chart's a little deceptive because the tall bar says people that had heard nothing at all. But that's only 42 percent, which means that a majority of people had heard at least something. And, and that's pretty good for a community that's had four meetings. We worked on a community engagement program, for example, in St. Joseph, Missouri, that ran about 18 months, and the numbers look much the same. So there has been, given the short period of the program, probably it doesn't seem short to those who have been attending, but for the four meetings, there's quite a bit of public awareness of, about the program. Mike mentioned that the survey questionnaire was kind of pulled from work that you were doing, and we asked about what is there five different options uh, for improving or in renovating or taking care of the issues at the elementary school level. And you will see on there that only one of them got majority support or support from a majority saying they would favor that option. And that was renovating all six schools and bringing them up to modern educational standards. The other options, a brand new K-8 center, replacing all six with a new elementary school, uh, replacing the six with two elementary schools, all had 20, 25 percent, and 30 percent favor, respectively. The notion, the last one on there, the notion of a grade center, 36 percent said that they would favor that. You'll notice in that third column, one of the options in answering that question was, I favor it, I oppose it, I could accept it. And so the oppose was less than a majority. And, and then you have, what, 16 percent saying accept or unsure. You've got 36 percent saying that, that, that they would favor that. That was the only one of the, uh, other than renovating the six buildings, the only one that even had kind of a semblance of support that got close, you know, at least to the number that you might need in terms of passing something at the polls. Uh, we also asked a question about what option would you prefer in terms of dealing with the junior high, total construction, reconstruction, or uh, doing additions and renovations. You see the results, 53% said renovations, 34%. Uh, set, set a new building. Uh, that's a heck of a lot closer, though, in terms of support than in the high school, where people were overwhelmingly in support of renovation and repair and not building a new high school to the tune of 71 percent to 19 percent. One of the more lopsided results in the, in the entire survey was, was on this issue, uh, where at least where the community is right now, they're more in line of, of, of kind of the renovation rather than and making improvements than, than a new high school. A really interesting question, I didn't really have any idea what the results would be on this, and they vary around the country when you ask this, was the whole notion of moving the sixth grade and having a six, seven, eight middle school rather than the seven, eight junior high. And as you can see, at least the way the question was worded, there was considerable support for doing that. 61% said that they would favor that. 27% said that they would oppose it. 
so very open-minded about that. And, and again, I think that's an idea, should it be the consensus of this group, that, that would have support in the community. Lastly, we ask about paying for all of this. And the first question was uh, simply a bond proposal for about $30 million to finance improvements. It is important to note when you look at this question that it didn't say anything at all about a tax rate increase, and 55% said that they would favor a bond proposal to finance improvements. Next question introduced the factual information that if the proposal passed, it would cost the owner of a $100,000 uh, house about $150 more in taxes or about $12.50 a month. Many times, maybe even most of the times, when you introduce to people what things are going to cost, it increases support rather than decreases support because people assume things are going to cost them a lot more in property taxes than what they really cost. People think a penny increase is going to be a huge amount of money. They don't understand property taxes very well. I wanted to say that because in this community, just the opposite happened, and it happened overwhelmingly. When people found out it was going to cost them twelve fifty a month, support plummeted for the proposal where you had 77% said that they would oppose that proposal. Uh, that, that's a big gap to, to change in, in the course of some kind of referendum campaign. We then ask about a penny sales tax and whether people would support or oppose that. 63% said that they would favor that. All across Illinois, there is considerably more support for sales tax proposals and property tax proposals, and this is consistent with that result, at least that second question where people knew what they were going to pay. And then we asked a question that Mike talked about towards one of the end of his slides. Would you prefer to do it with a bond proposal, a sales tax increase, or both? And 48% said do both. Uh, only 18% said the bond proposal, 24% said the sales tax. But again, in this question, there wasn't the notion that the bond proposal was going to cost them money. So let me say a few things in summary about this, just in terms of kind of what I got from, from, the, uh, from the survey. One, in terms of co construction of a new high school, kind of replacing the high school with a new building, right now at least there is a huge level of opposition and it's going to take a while for that to go away if that would be your decision. That's not going to happen between now and November, and it may not happen between now and three years from now if you wanted to do a community education proposal. To some degree or another, the same thing is true about the elementary school. Renovation is the option that people like, with that possible exception I talked about of, of the grade centers. But again, that's going to take a, a leap if you will, by the community to understand the need for it and, and kind of the reasons why that may make sense financially and educationally because at least right now, you know, it's significantly short of a majority in terms of doing that, but at least that movement isn't nearly as large as what the new movement would need, you know, in terms of convincing people about a new high school. Middle school, a lot more flexibility. People were generally not as opposed to building new as they were compared to the high school, there was a huge difference, and they were certainly open to the notion of putting the sixth grade in with a junior high and doing a six, seven, eight grade center, if you will. Uh, as you saw from the results, the bond election is very unpopular. If there's any kind of notion of a tax rate increase attached to that, a lot of communities who have been historically financing school improvements with property taxes can sometimes run bond proposals and not increase the tax rate, but that's not the case here, so that's going to be a very tough sale. Sales tax election was a whole lot more popular. From what I know from having visited this community now a number of times, I know the last time that there was something on the ballot for schools was the county sales tax proposal and it lost. So after a process like this, at least in my view, uh, another loss would be devastating. So, and, and I don't want to tell you what I would do if I was sitting in your seats, but I'm going to anyhow. But, but it seems to me that, that winning can be infectious, and getting started on a school facility improvement plan and getting a win can lead to additional wins down the road. That's why a lot of communities do phasing in of their improvement programs rather than trying to take a huge bite all at once. Uh, I live in Webster Groves, Missouri, in the St. Louis metropolitan area, and the only reason I want to mention that 
is that I worked on a program like this when I was as a volunteer in 1980 and 1999. Since that period of time, we have passed three tax rate proposals, and we have passed four bond proposals, and we have two more scheduled for next year. And that last, that fifth bond proposal will finish the facility improvement plan that went on paper in the year 2000. So it's not uncommon to phase things in, and I think that's something that you may want to think about. And as I said earlier, winning breeds more wins. Uh, people begin to see the improvements, and nothing allows them to understand school improvements more than success and actually seeing the buildings and kids in them. And, and I think you have every reason to think if you can get off to a good start in this process, which you are from setting here, but meaning the first step you take election-wise, that will lead to more successes down the road. With that, I think I'm turning it back over to Mike.